Welcome back to virtual training. If you remember me, we did one in December about the blade saw and I came back to talk about blade saw calibration, mainly when and what to calibrate and tips to find out what needs to be calibrated, how often to calibrate and things to help you along the way. Don't wanna beat around the bush here, let's get started. We've got eight things that you can calibrate on the blade saw six axes plus crooked lumber sensor or the CLS and the printer. I'm gonna focus more on the six axes, which are angle, bevel, stroke, elevation, gripper, and lossum. They are much more important to most people. The first one would be angle. Angle is pretty obvious. You imagine the angle of a part. If the angle on your blade saw is out of calibration, then your angles will obviously be off could affect your overall length, but not by very much. It has to be pretty egregiously off for it to do so. But in my experience, angle does not really go out of calibration. If you've ever had to change an angle shaft, you'll know that thing does not slip. Probably the sturdiest axis on this entire machine, it does not really budge. Bevel, bevel is a very important one. If it's out of calibration, it can put a lot of stress on your, your motor shaft and the hub. If you imagine bevel, that's how square the blade is to the board. If it's plunging into that board out of square, it'll bend the shaft one way or the other. You can hear it from a mile away whenever it's not cutting in clean. Sounds like a really dull blade. You can see burn marks on the blade, on the wood as it comes out. If you cut heels with your bevel out of calibration, you can see the face of the heel is not even all the way across. Uh, it's, it's very important. Angle and bevel both, if they're out of calibration and you try to calibrate your other axes, you're already, uh, you may be throwing the other ones off. That's, that's just because the other calibrations are based on where the saw blade cuts. And if bevel's off, it thinks it's cutting here when it's really over there. It's, it's a whole thing. Those two are very, very critical. Stroke. Stroke is, it's very important, but it's most important if you're cutting bevels. Because if, and stroke is the extend and the retract of the saw blade. So it actually making the cut. It'll throw off your center line for your bevels. So if you cut a lot of floor webs or rip bevels, just take one look at them. If the center line's off, you know, stroke is off. You're supposed to calibrate the stroke every time you change the saw blade. And that's just because the diameter of that blade is different, most likely, because it's been re tipped or it's been sharpened down. And it's either hitting the, the wood sooner or later than the last blade was. Especially if you cut a lot of floor webs or bevels, calibrate stroke every time you change the saw blade. Crooked lumber sensor. A damaged or uncalibrated crooked lumber sensor can throw your heel heights all over the place. So that crooked lumber sensor sits directly in front of the blade down by the waist belt, just pointing straight up at the bottom of the board. When we load boards into the saw, we load them with the crown up, not only because they're designed to be cut crown up, but that sensor can tell any deviation from a perfectly flat board. So if your board has a crown of a quarter of an inch, that sensor reads it and it'll change the elevation up one quarter of an inch on the fly. That's just to help with heel height. A lot of people, if they have issues with their crooked lumber sensor, if they have fairly decent wood, they'll just turn it off because a bad crooked lumber sensor could throw your heel heights all over the place. It can make your elevation compensate for the crown whenever it doesn't need to. So there is an option to just turn it off. Elevation, we just touched on it a little bit, talking about CLS. Elevation mainly throws off your heel height. If you have heels on the leading and the trailing edge of the board, that's first in the saw and last in the saw. If you're seeing that they are off pretty consistently, 
then it's most likely elevation. Now we're going to talk about our linear axes, gripper, gripper and lossum. Uh, gripper is probably the most common one to get phone calls for because it's all day long. It's moving 16 or 20 feet back and forth, pushing heavy boards in and out of the saw, banging into two by 12s. It takes a lot of abuse. Most cases, it'll affect like the leading edge of the board. It can affect the trailing, but really the, the sign is overall length. Same thing goes for the lossum. It doesn't move as far as the gripper, but it's in a much worse environment. It's just constantly covered in sawdust. I kind of want to say it's more neglected than the gripper, just because it's easy to forget those bearings are there. But just like the gripper, it mainly affects overall length. Then the printer. We'll get a lot of phone calls about the printer. This mainly applies to people that are printing for wall panel or have our AGS, that'd be plate layout or join alignment marks. Paid a lot of money to get that information printed on the board and have it printed accurately. If it's not accurate, then it just causes a headache because the builders on the table are used to it by now. And it should be right if you paid for all the money for it. If you do not have it, if you do not print wall panel or any of that, then odds are you've never calibrated the printer. And that's fine because for you guys, as long as the job data, part name, part ID, trust ID, all that, as long as it lands on the board, that's good enough. When do we need to calibrate? Talking to people on the road, you get a lot of different answers on how often people are calibrating. I take a lot of it with a grain of salt because I hear everything from well, we calibrate once a night to you know once a week, once a month, or whatever interval people have come up with. It's really easy. You only need to calibrate when there's an issue. Now that that issue could be parts are coming out incorrectly consistently. So if you cut the same part three times, or you have a, a whole stack of parts on a cart, and you can see all the heels are off, it's time to figure out what needs to be calibrated. Now, if you've got a stack of 10 top cords and one of them has an eighth inch heel on it, that's not worth really digging into because it could just be lumber quality or a board slipped out of whatever. If it's repeatable, that's when we start digging into it. Another time to calibrate is if there's a mechanical change. So you replace a servo motor or a gearbox bearing. It's an important one. Place a home sensor. Any of those you'd have to do a uh, the admin level calibration, which we're going to go over at the end. Then the last one that I can think of is while running, the saw can pop up a message saying the saw has detected an out or a possible out of calibration on whatever axis. And that's, that's just because every time or each axis has a specific sensor it uses, let's say the laws, for example, uh, it uses a lockout sensor. Every time it passes over that sensor, it records what position the saw thinks the lossum is at. Well, now if let's say the lossum slipped, like the bell jumped a tooth on one of the pulleys, well, last time the lossum was at position three inches, it slipped and it goes over that sensor again. Now it's at two and a half inches. The saw will warn you that something is slipping and it'll give you the option to stop or ignore. It'll point you to our website with the the slippage checklist, that would be the other instance that we need to calibrate. Determining what axis needs to be calibrated is uh, kind of a tricky one. Get a lot of phone calls about this, really. People get ahead of themselves and just start shotgunning what needs to be calibrated. If you use these two tips here, it might save you a whole lot of time. Two different boards that I like to cut, the first one being a pre-calibration board. This is if you already know that you have a, a linear problem, that'd be gripper or lossum, this is the perfect board to cut to tell you which one needs to be calibrated, if not both. Then the second one is a manually created part on the blade saw. Pretty much narrow down everything else. Let's talk about the pre-calibration board. In the main screen of the blade saw, if you go to tools, and then the first button all the way to the left, just left of the calibration button, you see the pre-calibration board. It'll pop up the little menu down here in the bottom right of the screen. It gives you instructions on what to do and describes what parts mean what down the bottom. But it asks you to load a 16-foot 2x4 into the saw. Gripper brings it forward, cuts off 
a chunk of the leading edge. We're going to toss it away, ignore it. Once it makes that cut, the gripper is going to move exactly what it believes to be seven feet, make another cut, and then eject the board. We're going to set that aside and label that as board number one. Once it makes that part number one, the lozenge is going to take over and it's going to drag that board exactly what it believes to be seven foot. It'll take two movements for it to move it, but it'll do it. And then it'll cut on the trailing edge and spit that out. Now, if part one, the first seven foot part, if it's not exactly seven foot long, then your gripper is out of calibration. We need to figure out what's going on there. And part number two, obviously, if it's off, your lozenge out of calibration. And if it's if it's off by a lot, we need to find out exactly what caused it. So it could be a loose belt, bad bearings, what have you. But simple calibration might fix it. But if it's really far off, it, it'd be a good time to investigate too. Just go put eyes on it. I key in part number 13. Technicians are pretty big fans of this. I use it all the time. But it's a double angled web with quarter inch heel on both sides. What's nice about it is... It'll pretty much tell you elevation bevel and if you have a linear problem. So if, let's say your leading heel, the one on the right down here in the bottom of the screen, if it's off, that could be a linear problem. Kind of doubt that would be it. It could be an angle issue. More common than not, whenever you cut this part, both of your heels, if you do have a problem with heels, both of them will be off. And that would point towards elevation. Either that blade is sitting too high or too low. And then this could also tell you if your bevel's off because you can look at the face of both heels. And if it's even all the way across, your bevel is probably fine. And if it doesn't come out overall length, if it comes out incorrect, then you can cut a pre-cal board and go from there. But these two boards really, really help narrow things down. And if you need help going through these, uh, We've cut them a million times. You can call us and we'll walk you through it. That's a pretty easy phone call. I briefly mentioned admin calibration earlier. There are two different levels of calibration for this saw. The first one being just your normal home position. And the second one being the admin or counts per inch. The way I like to explain it to people is the home position. If you imagine your axis, but we'll take gripper for example, Let's say the gripper is 16 foot long. The home position will take that 16 foot and shift it left or right because it's, it's figuring out where that home sensor is. And then the counts per inch calibration, that's just how many counts of that encoder equal one inch in linear movement of that axis. So they're both important. Most of the time, you'll just be using the home position unless you were to replace something mechanical or a servo motor or bearing, something like that. I'd like to walk you guys through how to do it. So tools up or tools menu on the blade saw screen, go to the calibration menu. Here's all of our different calibratable axes. So if we select angle and hit start, mine's going to move a lot faster because mine's just a simulator doesn't really have to do much thinking. Right now, I only have one option, just the home position. Now, if I was to go log in as an admin, the, under the file tab, log in, you can type whatever you want for the operator. And then the password changes every day. Hit log in. You can see down at the bottom of the screen here, it updated to admin X, and you can see my operator name that I typed in right there. This admin X tells you that you successfully logged in. Now, if I go back to tools, calibrate, and I start the angle calibration again, I have a second option here, home position and counts per degree. We call it counts per inch because if you were to do, if we were in the lozenge calibration or the gripper, it would say counts per inch. This is what I mean by just your operator calibration and then what to do whenever you mechanically change something. A lot of the time, if I go up to a saw and it's really banged up, somebody strike calibrating and they've just gone down the rabbit hole, I'll just do the, the admin calibration because I don't really trust anything that's on it. But this is what I mean. There is an option here for all home positions. that will just take you from angle bevel stroke, top down each column in that order. If you do want to do a whole system calibration, the order is very important. Always start with angle or bevel. Some people like to swap them around, but they're in an order for a reason. So you can do angle, bevel, stroke 
and then go to crooked lumber sensor, elevation, gripper, laws and printer, blah, blah, blah. If you don't have crooked lumber sensor as an option on this screen, it's probably because you have it turned off. I will show you guys really quick how to turn it off. If you're having issues, you have to be logged as an admin for this, but you go tools, options, general, and then this box right here, crooked lumber sensor is installed. If I were to uncheck that, hit accept. Down here in the bottom right hand of the screen, before I do, you can see that CLS status in the measurement. That green banner with the measurement in it, it's a good quick reference to know if it's turned off or on. That number will change on the fly and tell you how much the saw is compensating before every cut. But once I turn it off, you'll see that banner disappear like that. Final tip, make frequent backups on your saw. It's such an easy thing to do. It can save you so much headache in the future. What I mean by that is on older saws, it's a backup configuration button under the tools option. Um, on newer saws, it's a little more in depth. We can walk you through it if you call us. But the reason you would want to do it is if you have gone down the rabbit hole, you've already tried calibrating a bunch of things and you just can't get things back where they need to be, you'd like to start over. If, if you don't have a recent backup, let's say your most recent one was 2018, we can't back it up to 2018. You'd be better off starting from scratch. So something that I always recommend to people is make it a part of whatever PM works for you. So everybody's changing their saw blade, I'm hoping. Why not just take an extra minute and make a backup? Because if you have one backup a week, that's, that's not hurting anything. You can't have too many backups. Another thing too is if you have somebody on second ship that thinks they know what they're doing or thinks they, they're helping or fixing something when really they're making it worse. If you have a backup from day shift, you can just, when your shift comes in, roll it back and be ready to cut. The next big thing would be to try and narrow down what needs to be worked on before you just start calibrating and changing everything. It's really easy if, if you're just shotgunning and guessing at what needs to be calibrated to get down the rabbit hole and not be able to dig yourself out. But this is where those, those two boards come into play, that pre-calibration board and the part number 13. If you try those first and it does point you to just one axis that's out, then it, it just makes your life a lot easier. It saves you a lot of time. Focus on axes that were controlling the board during that specific cut. What I do is if somebody tells me a specific part is coming out wrong, like heels or remainders, whatever it may be, I'll just stand there and stare through that window of the saw and watch it cut them and just try and picture what is controlling that part during that cut. Because if it's if you can find a common denominator of what's controlling it during all the cuts that are off, that, that could tell you right there what needs to be looked at. And then just calibrating may not be the answer either. If it's way off, then you need to investigate if anything mechanical is bad, like a, a loose belt, a worn pulley, bearings have gone bad, gearbox, what have you. It's kind of fun to think about. You're, you're kind of a detective trying to figure out, you know, who done it what access is messing with me here and then another big one if if you don't know what to calibrate there's no shame in calling because calibration phone calls are about the easiest ones you can take for a blade saw i know when i was taking phone calls too i enjoyed them because like i said you're kind of like a detective trying to figure out what causing issues our phone number is 1-800-523-3380 feel free to call us I want to thank all of you for showing up again. There's been a lot of you that hit me up about the last video. I hope you guys are enjoying them and they're helping you. Until next time, thanks.